don't mean to freak you out, but there's just something off about the whole place. It gives me the creeps. Make sure everything's hooked up. There we go. Cool. All right. Hi, I'm Carla. Welcome back to There Might Be Cupcakes. Uh, and I am back to tell uh, more of my personal ghost stories. Apparently, I am unusually haunted. Uh, when I uh, clicked off last time, I had a list. I'm like, oh, I forgot this. I forgot this. I forgot this. Um I'm I'm quite surprised. <laughs> I have a I have a weird life apparently. Um so um before I get started, I want to make sure everything's hooked up and working and welcome to everybody that's joining me. I just want to let you know if you're on Facebook or Twitter, I can't see your messages live because I've only got so much space going on. So please come over to get vocal if you want to talk to me live. Um, so, and thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Let me get my notes set up. So some stuff has been going on in our house. You know, as you know, from the last episode, our house is haunted. Uh, some things have been happening since the moment I turned off last time. Um, there's been repeated thumps from the area of my nightstand, which is just over here. Um, it sounds like somebody's setting something down on my nightstand, like like a bunch of books, or knocking stuff off of my nightstand onto the floor, like again, a bunch of books. And it's about once a day. It it was every day for like a week after the first episode, and it's tapered off now, and now it's about a couple of times a week. And it'll just be a thud, and then nothing else. Um, It's a couple of times this past week, there's been... The sound of one of our dogs jumping off the bed, and uh, which is alarming to me because it usually sounds like it's the dachshund and Ellie is not supposed to jump off the bed. And so I'll step out of the room and Ellie will jump off the bed and I'll come hobbling back in the room as fast as I can limp. And Ellie is on the bed looking at me like, well, what's the problem? Um, again, as we've had over the years, there's the sound of falling boxes. Like if you've had cardboard boxes stacked up and they fall over, it's a distinct noise and we don't have cardboard boxes stacked up. Um, Larry has thought twice in the past few weeks since the last episode that he has heard me calling him and has come in to see what I've needed. Um, I don't know why my glasses appear to be crooked. I think I'm just nervous. I'm not used to looking at myself while I podcast. Uh, Larry's thought he heard me calling him um, from a distance and has come in to see what I needed. And it wasn't me. Um, and I've heard several times muted conversation and muted music late at night. It sounded like it was from far off. It sounded like an old timey radio. Um, I couldn't hear exactly what I was hearing. But it was just, you know, kind of no noise in the distance. Just kind of almost like the teacher on Charlie Brown. Just kind of or, you know, that but music. Um, nothing disturbing, you know, other than the dog, you know, imitating the dog. I, I don't feel scared here. Uh, I never have. Um, it's just kind of. It almost seems to be passive activity, just like there's something here and, you know, I felt scared. Like I, like I told you in the last episode, I felt scared other places. I felt very disturbed, um, in other times and places here. It's just like, we have a roommate we can't see and sometimes they're noisy, you know? Um, but I thought it was interesting. The thumps that started on my nightstand, you know, as soon as I started telling these stories, it's like, Hello, um, because that was brand new. So, 
Um, one of the stories that I was surprised I forgot was things that happened in Salem, Massachusetts. You think I wouldn't have forgotten that. So um, the first thing that happened was um, in Crow Hammond's Corner, which is the store that was founded um, by, it's a metaphysical store, I guess is how you could refer to it, that was founded by Laurie Cabot. Now, for those of you who don't know who Laura Cabot is, um, she is a self-proclaimed witch. Um, she is quite famous for uh, people um, who go to Salem. Um, she does not own Crowhaven's Corner anymore. Uh, she sold it to her daughter, Penny, I believe, um, and moved to an art gallery of her own, metaphysical store and art gallery, which is on Salem Wharf. Um, I'm not certain if she still owns that. I haven't been to Salem in a long time. Um, but I also had an experience there. Um, so anyway, Crowhaven's Corner is in a very old house in Salem. It's very unusual looking. It's one of the old black houses. It kind of looks like an old pitched hat. I'll post a picture, photograph of it uh, on the website. It's, it's very charming um, in a gothic way. And it's very small. It's very cramped. Um, the front part, there's a front room and then a second room. And both of them are for books. And then there's a very small back room for psychic readings. And then they had an upstairs. And I believe Lori lived there at the time. And there was a tourist <laughs> who was being extremely disrespectful. He was making fun of witchcraft. He was making fun of Salem. He was making fun of Laurie herself. He thought all of it was hooey and he was loudly proclaiming it. Um, he was the epitome of a tourist, if you can imagine. Fanny pack, flip flops, just obnoxious, you know, obnoxious head to toe and loudly voicing his opinions and his wife was hushing him she was humiliated she was nervous um and she kept looking at um both of Laura Cabot's daughters were behind the counter and she kept looking at him like it's not me it's not me and then looking back to him and hushing him and he's like there's nothing here just do it and then a book from high up on the shelf the shelves went all the way to the ceiling, and this was a very old house, so they were 10 foot ceilings at least. The book fell from the very top shelf and hit him directly on the head, like the part of his hair. And I saw it, I happened to be looking at him, and it came out like something out of a movie just edged out and boink, and then fell to the floor. And he, just a cussing, he picked it up and handed it to his wife like she's supposed to do something with it. And she turns to the counter like, I'm so sorry about him and I'm sorry about the book. And she gives it to Penny and Penny just nods and smiles. And then another book from about nine feet up slides out. He's like somebody pulled it out and fell in the part of his head. Fell to the floor. And then another one slid out. And these... I'll show you with the book. It was slide sliding out and then falling. And it was and it happened three, four, five, six times. <laughs> he stopped making fun and they left. And they left scared. And I looked at Penny. And Penny was smiling and she just looked at me. And nodded, like, whatever you think is right. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I know what I saw. And it was like something out of a movie. It was unbelievable. I'm so glad I witnessed it. I don't know what I witnessed, but I witnessed something paranormal. Um, so I had... Another thing that happened at Craven's Corner is I had a psychic reading. I had a reading with Michael Pendragon. Um, and what is interesting about it 
is not only did what he said came, come to pass, if you interpreted it, you know, as my disability, but I had another reading where the exact same thing was said. Um, I referenced my friend Jeff, uh, the attorney with multiple sclerosis in the last uh, episode, where I told him about my drawer slamming. He was he was the attorney, I, my friend, that I told him about um, the drawer slamming on my hand. And he explained that telekinetic uh, energy can happen when someone gets upset. Well, he had a friend that did palm readings. And she read my palm. And she said there was a break, a distinct break in my career line. And that I would have two careers with a very big, strange gap in the middle. Well, Michael Pendragon said the same thing. And he said it was extremely unusual. He'd never seen it before. That I was going to have one career. There was going to be a huge gap. A very strange gap. A break. And then I would do something else. Well, I was a counselor. I went to school for counseling. I have a master's in counseling. I was a therapist. And then I became disabled. And now I'm doing this in writing. So... I think it's worth mentioning on a paranormal episode. You know, take it as you will. I don't know. But I thought it was weird and worth mentioning that I got the same reading years apart from two different people. And they were both a little weirded out by it. Like, you know, never seen this before. So, um, let me see. Um, the second event that had to do specifically with Lori, it was in her new art gallery that I mentioned. I'm down by the wharf. I was out of sight of the door. I was looking. I was bent over when I could still get down on the floor. And I'm um, looking at, I believe, Egyptian jewelry. I don't know why that sticks in my head. It's been 20 years. I was looking at Egyptian jewelry in, in those large glass cases. And I, the, my view was completely blocked. And I felt the sudden charge of electricity. But it was like it was internal. It was like it was emotional. And I suddenly felt like I need to stand up. I got to stand up. And I've never felt anything like that again before or since. And I stood up. And when I stood up, um, Laura Cabot had come in the door. And she's a presence. I don't know. You, you need to to look up a picture of her if you're curious she's like the negative image of stevie nicks she has she always wears this big black cape and she has really really you know dramatic dark black hair and just and she had come in the door and she was staring at me and i just wanted to note it i mean it made me nothing but it's the only time I've ever felt something like that. And I thought I'd just shoehorn it in with the Salem stuff. You know, weird stuff seems to follow me. I don't know. All right. So mom's house. Mom used to live when she first moved. My parents divorced and are now remarried. When my mom moved up here to the mountains, she lived on my mountain just down the road. And she lived in what's known around here as Bertie's house. We live so far up in the country that things are noted like that. It, we actually live near Walton's Mountain. That's, that's how country we are. The, the original Walton's Mountain. Um, and homes are known like that. They're known for one of the owners. So mom lived in Bertie's house. And when she moved in, the landlord told her, now... If you hear mama, don't be scared. And mom said, excuse me? <laughs> and she said, look, uh, mama loved this house and she lived here for a very, very long time. And she still lives here. Are you going to have a problem with that? And mom said, well, I guess not. <laughs> and mom, you know, having lived in our house, being haunted, you know, really was okay with it. You know, Birdie was an older woman and... and Mom 
and her dog, Harley, would hear Birdie at night. You know, Harley would react. And Harley didn't have a problem with it. You know, he would just, he'd react and go, okay, there she is, and lay back down. It would sound like Birdie was either having a conversation with someone else that mom couldn't hear in the kitchen or was on the phone. It was very, I've heard it, I heard it myself once. And what I heard was the same thing. She was either having a conversation with someone that I couldn't hear or she was on the phone. And it was loud. It was loud and it was distinct. And it went on when I when I spent the night and I heard it. It went on for about 15 minutes. There was an old woman in the kitchen talking to somebody. And I remember I was there. I spent the night because mom was in the hospital, I believe. And Harley and I looked at each other and it was like Harley just went, yep. And then we just laid there and listened and it went on for about 15 to 20 minutes and it was clear as day. Um, however, what Harley and mom did not like is there was somebody else in the basement. Um, there would occasionally be very heavy footsteps on the basement stairs. Um, the basement was spooky. The house is warm and welcoming. It's just a little country home. The basement is weird. The basement has unfinished steps and it's dark and the, the house being set on a mountain goes down a hill. So the basement is even steeper than normal. And these steps are just wooden slats. And mom and Harley would both hear these heavy footsteps in the basement steps and then the basement door would rattle. And although Harley responded positively to Birdie, he would hide when that happened. Um, so they seemed to, it seemed to be somebody totally different than Birdie. But Birdie visited all the time. She seems to still live there. Um, and I love that her daughter realizes that. It's really cool. It's, Birdie's house is standing empty right now. Um, I would love to ask her daughter, if I can go um, spend the night, see if I can get any EVPs or see if I can hear Birdie again with my um, own ears. So, um, follow up with the story I told you about Alice at the Hermitage in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina, which is outside of Myrtle Beach. She is the girl um, that died asking for her uh, engagement ring that her brother took away from her when he found out that she was engaged beneath her station. And now she uh, haunts the area of her house and the inlet looking for her ring. Her brother threw her, her engagement ring into the inlet. That's how the story goes. Well, I forgot part of the story. After we toured the house, we stopped by the cemetery where she's buried. She is buried away from her family. It's really sad. The flag family is buried together in this proper Southern family vault. And she's buried off by herself. And she has a flat stone. And it just says Alice. It doesn't have any dates on it. It doesn't have any distinguishing marks. It doesn't even have her last name. It just says Alice. It's really sad. It, it's like the whole family rejected her. And we were told by the owner of the house, as I said, he was a great storyteller. Um, I think we spent hours the house sitting on the porch with him listening to stories all about the area. And he said that one of the stories about her grave is that if you walk around her grave three times and ask her a question, you'll get your answer. So he'd also said that, you know, the, the area of the inlet is was prone to many epidemics, yellow fever, uh, smallpox, malaria. Um, they think that Alice died of malaria. Um, malaria, the inlet was a hotbed for epidemics because it was wet, it was low-lying, it was swampy. They had constantly had overseas shipments. They constantly had people coming in, which included pirates. Um, many of the plantations were rice, so then you had wet crops on top of that. So mosquitoes, you know, it was, it was awful. Um, and 
one of the gentleman's stories was that um, for some reason it was a tradition to designate people that had died of epidemics with darker stones. I don't know why. Weird Southern tradition. And so I walked around her grave three times while my parents tolerated me, <laughs> tolerated my youthful uh, game. And I asked her in my head, how many epidemic graves were there in All Saints graveyard? And the number came to my head, 42. So I started counting. And I got to 40. And my dad was hightailing it to the car. Because there were 42. <laughs> so, <laughs> take that as you will. I'm, I'm spooky. I don't, I don't understand it, but I'm weird. Um, and I have weird things happen to me. All right. And um, the last ghost story um, that I have for my personal experiences is mom's apartment in Salisbury. Mom's apartment in Salisbury is, it used to be a family mansion. Uh, and when I say mansion, I mean mansion. Uh, nouveau riche mansion. Uh, I say that, uh, you know, think think of what you've seen on reality TV. Um, gauche, large, overdone. Okay. And it was split up into apartments. Um... It felt uncomfortable. The apartment was lovely, but the building felt uncomfortable. Um, the hallways, I wrote down, the hallways always felt dark, even though they were really well lit. Uh, the basement was something else. And the basement is where we had our paranormal experiences. The basement had the laundry room in it. Um, the basement was left decorated uh, the way the teenage son, who was the light of the family's life, apparently, left it. Um, I won't name the building, but it's named for the teenage son. And it's like Prince, what's his name? It's like Prince Patrick, Prince Stephen, something like that apartments the basement is decorated <laughs> it looks like you imagine the playboy mansion red naga hide um lots of red naga hide uh reclining fainting couches um a playing card decor Lots of white columns for no reason. Um, just real pimped out. Real pimped out. And dark. And spooky on its own. I mean, really, you know, just gave off a bad vibe. And then the hallway had spooky clown art. Clown art. <laughs> so I don't I don't know what was going on in this family, but <laughs> it it was set up for bad mojo. Okay. Um so mom and I went down there. Mom kept telling me, I, I feel funny when I go down there to do laundry. I don't like it. I feel like somebody's looking at me. So you know me, I'm like, must be ghost. So we went down there and I decided I'm going to see if, it, you know, I'm going to, you know, see if anybody wants to talk to me and I'm going to take photographs the whole time. And, um, I just started walking around, you know, saying, is there anybody here and snapping photos and mom started getting chills. Mom started feeling like somebody was near her. And then we both heard the sound of a music box, you know, like an old fashioned music box, like the one in the conjuring. 
Um, and it sounded like it was coming from a location. It sounded like it was coming from the direction of the back door. And um, she's begging me to leave. And I'm like, no, this is the good stuff. This is why we're here. And she's, she's like, you're going to be the death of me. And <laughs> so um, she's rushing me to the elevator. And I'm snapping pictures and snapping pictures. And um, the last picture I got, um, it looked pedestrian. You know, going through my pictures, didn't think of anything. But then mom reminded me one of the very strict rules of the apartments was that um, you had to turn off all the lights. You turned off all the lights downstairs. Like, you get in trouble. Like, demerits. You know, it, it, it was a strange place to live. But the last picture I took, the light in the basement was on the light above the doors to Prince what's his name's domain his pimp kingdom was on and we know we turned it off because we had to go to the elevator in the dark <laughs> so um, I wasn't afraid but that music box playing was one of the eeriest things that's happened to me um there's just not that there's nothing like something that's supposed to be cheerful and sweet in the wrong context to be really creepy. Like in, in one of my favorite haunted house movies, 1408, you know, um, Stephen King um, movie based on his um, novel, which is out of the blood and smoke collection, you know, the carpenter song we've only just begun playing in the middle of this hotel room that's haunted just it's not okay <laughs> so a music box in the middle of an empty room it's not okay <laughs> so that is goodness so i have an hour and a half worth of paranormal activity in my life um that's probably not okay <laughs> i'm probably not okay so um i got together a bunch more recommended books for you uh let's see Nancy Roberts was my introduction as a kid to um, True Ghost Stories. And this book, uh, whoops, South Carolina Ghost, has Alice of the Hermitage's story in it. Um, Nancy Roberts specializes in the area I grew up, North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, and she tells the stories as they are. She doesn't try to hype them up. She actually had an experience with Alice. She went to the graveyard. Um, Alice starts on page 27. And she went to Allstate Cemetery. And was looking for Alice's grave and couldn't find it. And met a girl, teenager, who was there. And the teenager helped her find it. And she believes that that was Alice. Uh, because she uh, met her description. And because she disappeared <laughs> you know, take that as you will. Um, but yeah, Nancy Roberts is a um, anthropologist um, who, like I said, just tells the stories as they are, as she finds them. Um, another really good uh, collector of true ghost stories is, believe it or not, Anne Rule, the true crime writer's um, daughter, Leslie. Um, she has several books i've got three of them um oops still not ghost in the mirror uh her first one ghosts among us and this one's really interesting when the ghost screams now, i know that sounds a little melodramatic but the idea behind it is she started looking into uh are, is a ghost more likely to occur from a violent crime you know, why are ghosts, you know, why do hauntings occur? And, you know, are they more possible from um, violent crimes, from, you know, sudden actions, sudden deaths, unexpected deaths? So, um, you know, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still it's only my second time. So... And I went, I have made a letterbox list 
I love letterbox. Letterbox is how I um, keep track of the movies I watch and the movies I want to watch. And one of the wonderful things they do on there is they allow you to make lists of movies. And I made a list of the best haunted house and demented domicile films. And demented domicile is a phrase I coined for houses that just aren't right. Um, they aren't necessarily haunted. Like one of my favorite demented domicile novels is the house next door by Ann river Sedans. Um, the house is not necessarily haunted, but um, it messes with people. Um, and I can't, I won't spoil it for you. But I'm going to put the link to this list in the chat. Let's see. This should send. There you go. Um, and I've been collecting um, my, the best movies that I've watched. My, my most highest rated. Um, but I made a list of high quality movies of these that are off the beaten path that I don't hear people talk about. Um they are let's see delirium delirium is a movie about a man who is fresh out of rehab and he is um taking care of this house that he is rehabilitating and he has to stay there because he's on parole and he kind of gets trapped in the house and it you don't know if it's haunted or it's him you know he's he's mentally ill he's coming off drugs you know, is it, is it in his mind or is it in the house? And then Malevolent. Malevolent is very creative. It is uh, a brother and sister pair who fake hauntings. They pretend to be ghost hunters and they go into people's houses and then they fake the hauntings. But they get, they get uh, more than they bargained for when they go into a real haunted house. Um, and then there's a movie that a lot of people don't like that I like. It doesn't have the best name. It, it sounds cheesy from the get. It's called The Bye Bye Man. Um, the, the idea behind The Bye Bye Man is it's a legend. It's an urban legend. And once you say his name, once you think about him, once you talk about him, he's there and you can't get rid of him. And he haunts you and he haunts your house. Um, I won't go any farther. I won't spoil it for you. Um, like I said, it's one of those movies on Letterboxd that nobody else likes. Everybody says it's cheesy. I find it genuinely scary. Um, let's see. And then, of course, I mentioned 1408. 1408 is uh, by Stephen King. It's based on um, his novel. It's in the Blood and Smoke collection. Uh, and it is um, gen It's a two-man show. It's um, John Cusack and um, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, Samuel L. Woman Jackson. Uh, <laughs> and um, John Cusack carries almost the whole movie. He um, is uh, charged with staying in the most haunted hotel room ever. And it's terrifying. And it's beautiful and it's brilliantly done. Um. Then there's Stir of Echoes, which I never heard anybody talking about anymore. It's based on Richard Matheson novel, which is also brilliant. And it's Kevin Bacon. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I need to rewatch that. Um, and then, of course, my favorites, one of my very favorites is Session 9 with David Caruso. Um, it is, it was inspired by uh, all the, uh, mental institutions that they shut down. It was inspired by places like Waverly Hills, you know, that I talked about in my last episode, uh, which are genuinely spooky. Um, and then The Others with Nicole Kidman, uh, which please don't let anybody spoil for you. Um, the Paranormal Activity series, which um, I don't care what anybody says, is, is genuinely horrifying. Uh, the Changeling with George C. Scott, which is beautiful as well as scary and very nicely understated. Um, and the series with the odd name, the it, an off-putting name, the Hell House LLC series. 
The name comes from um, this group of friends, this group of young friends who make haunts. They make haunted houses um, that, you know, the type you go through, you know, in October. You pay to go through and people scare you. And that's their company name, Hell House LLC. And they go to this town called Abaddon and they take the Abaddon Hotel and they're going to renovate it um, and make their new Hell House. And they're filming everything they do. And what you're watching is the film that was recovered. <laughs> and that's all I'll tell you about that. Um, a lot of what you see what you're watching for is what do you see in the background? Did you see something move? And that's what makes it so frightening. Um, so, uh, I don't have a lot more tonight. I apologize for this being a shorter show than usual, but it was more of just a uh, sequeling up from the last show. Um, like I said, there's the link to the list, and I will also um, put the movies and the books I mentioned on the website um, for you to um, check out as well, um, and the books that these movies were based on, I will link to on the website as well. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed my stories. Uh, I know I seem to be peculiarly haunted. <laughs> I will keep you updated if anything new happens in my house. Um, and I hope to hear some of your ghost stories soon. And thank you once again for joining me. And I will talk to you soon. Have a good night. Hi me with a little after note. Mom reminded me after I recorded that I left out a detail about her Salisbury apartment building. When we investigated the basement and we heard the music box start playing, we both looked, of course, towards the direction of the music box sound, which was at the far back door of the basement, and we both saw a large white shape of light. Then, of course, Mom made me leave, which I didn't want to do, and that's when I turned off the light outside the basement room which was the strict rules of the apartment building. When you left downstairs, you turned off everything, as I said. And I kept snapping pictures of the basement doorway as mom yelled at me from the far end of the hallway at the elevator. And that's when I then got the photograph with that light turned on. Sorry for that omission. So yes, big white shape, light, creepy. <laughs> Please check out my list of my favorite haunted houses and demented domicile movies on letterbox which is linked in the show notes i'll continue to add to it as i find new ones as always thanks for listening and thank you for being patient with my health which interferes with my recording schedule and uh and thanks for watching as i learn my way around being live i appreciate and love every one of you be safe and well <laughs>